I wanted to preface this video with a quick um, thought. Don't let this following modification and the flaw that I'm pointing out put you off on purchasing this little printer. Take it into consideration. But it is a cheap Chinese printer when it comes right down to it. You pay a little over $200 for this finished machine that's ready to roll and it's a fairly high precision machine. And overall the performance is really good with it. I've been very pleased with its print quality. But there is one glaring flaw in the design that many owners of this printer have also addressed and that's what this video is about. Uh, I expected, I fully expected when I purchased uh, this device to have to do some modifications to it. Um, at $200 for such a high precision machine, there's just no way they're going to get everything right. Uh, I, I just knew it was going to be going to need to be uh, modified somewhere. So that said, let's go ahead and get into the video on the modification. And you'll see that it's not very difficult to do. Um, you can do it pretty quickly. I would recommend that any owner of this printer make this modification. It's going to increase the longevity of your device. Um, and it is reversible. If you needed to send this in um, for other reasons, you could reverse this mod very easily and send the printer back um, in its original form. So let's get into the video. Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I've got the little 3D printer down on the bench this morning. I'm going to make a modification to it. Now, it's not broken. It's not broken. Not yet, anyway. But it's a cheap Chinese printer, and I fully expected when I bought it that I was probably going to be spotting a few shortcomings in the design that um, might need improving for longevity's sake, you know. And uh, one glaring one to me is in the bed. Now, the bed moves quite a bit. I mean, that's, that's quite a range of motion right there, right? 120 millimeters in either direction. Um, and this is a heated bed. Now that means that this, this aluminum plate on the bottom side of it has a PC board heater that covers the entire bed uh, and a thermistor. And that, uh, that's used to heat this bed up to help the plastic adhering to it. And then the thermistor feeds back the temperature to the controller so it can maintain the temperature. So that means there's wires, right? There's wires connecting to this bed going down into the chassis that have to contend with all of that motion. And in fact, I can feel towards the end, you can see it spring back just a little bit. I can feel the resistance increase as I move back where I'm starting to, to pull on those wires. So um, obviously what the designers did here is they wanted the printer to have a small footprint and they wanted it to, to be nice and, and complete looking, you know, no external cables and things running around. So up underneath here, they have the two sets of wires that go to this bed um, curled up and bound up to give them, you know, some room to flex. Well, that's an awful lot of flexing going on. And in fact, I'll, I'll try to reposition the camera and show you, but the wires where they go through a grommet into the case are being pulled in and out of the case by about an inch and rubbing against that grommet. And to me, that is a point of future failure. Um, that much motion, I mean, it's a full inch that I, I watched it. It's a full inch that it's pulling the wire in and out of the case, rubbing it across the edge of a grommet as it does that. And that's just going to wear right through that wire's insulation over time. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to reroute the wires from the back of this bed externally into the corner of the case here, because where they hook up on the PC board is right near that corner. And I've already printed out a couple of modification parts for that. This is a replacement, or the half of the replacement for this side panel. I'm going to print the other half. Um, let me get this so you can see it. I'm going to print the other half after I get the modification done. But, but this will replace this side panel and give a nice little uh, hole there where I can put a grommet and have the wires come inside and hook up. And this is a strain relief that will bolt onto the back of the bed here and again give a spot for the wires to come out right they'll come out from under the bed through a grommet right here and then they'll just lazily loop like that and back in and that will cause or result in very little flexing of the external wires 
with them anchored here and here so there'll be no flexing where they connect to the board or where they plug into the uh, controller on the inside. So that's, that's the plan. So let me put this on its side and see if I can give you a close up under here so you can see those wires. So here's the bottom of the carriage that the bed sits on and you can see the two wires come through this grommet from the bed and then they're just kind of twisted a little here so that they they pull out and that's where the tension's coming because they're almost fully stretched out at that point and they've pulled up out of this grommet down here and then they slide back in you can see it there see that right here is where it's going into the chassis and you can see whoosh, slides in slides out slides in slides out and in fact I'm starting to see a little bit of a shine on the uh, insulation here where it's rubbing against that grommet Additionally, when it goes in the other direction and those wires um, curl up, you can see how much flex is going on there? Look at that. And it curls right up and then it slides down into the grommet further. You know, so that's just rubbing and flexing and these wires are going are gonna to fail eventually. So that's, that's what we're trying to solve here. So the first thing I got to do is, is I need to take the side panel off of the printer up here and disconnect these wires and feed them back up through out of the... Uh, out of the chassis and back up through this grommet so that I can run them straight out the, straight out the back out here. Alrighty. The printer is all nice sheet metal construction. I mean the, the build quality of the metal construction on this thing is, is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. But This side panel comes off with just um, five screws. Lifts right off. And that exposes the control board right there. And our heater wires, hmm, I might have to tilt the camera down some. Let's see, eh, you might be able to see it, are connected on this side of the board over here on this edge. There's uh, this little one that's one connector in from this side is the thermistor. And the one on the back, I think, is the heater. It'll be easy to tell. Um, just moving the wires, you'll see which ones move. And those are the two connectors that you have to disconnect and then feed back up through the chassis. So let me get those wires out of there, and then we'll move on to the next step. Well, I guess I probably should have done this sooner rather than later. Now, I've only run about 40 prints on this thing over a couple of weeks. But right here was a point on the bed where they had a zip tie holding these wires up and that was one of the points where a lot of flexing was going on and I'm pretty sure you can probably see this I'll zoom in on it but the insulation has worn through on one of the bed heater wires already where the zip tie was cutting into it and we've got a few strands that have broken right there so <laughs> looks like I'll be replacing one of the bed heater wires right from the get-go yep you know, well, you know, you get what you pay for. It is a cheap printer, and I did fully expect, you know, don't, don't let me put you off on it. Um, any cheap printer, I fully expect you're going to have to modify it or improve on it um, over time because it's just, there's some things that you just, it's just hard to do well on these CNC type machines just because of the nature of them and all the motion that takes place with these mechanical systems. There's just certain ways that things should be done, and there's just no way to uh, to shortcut it. And uh, yeah, that that wire is definitely cut. The insulation is cut through there, and some of the strands are broken. Looks like several of the other strands inside have broken just from that that motion right there, where it was uh, supposedly strain relieved. <laughs> All right, well, let me find some wire. I guess I'll have to take the bed off to. Uh, Resolder that, but we'll go ahead and get that done. We'll do it right, do it right, and then uh, the printer should last for years. All right, I have the bed out. I thought I'd show you what it looks like on the underside. You can see there's two solder points there for the thermistor that's embedded, and then the two electrical connections for the heater. Now, what the heater is, you can kind of sort of see it if you look down here. You can kind of sort of see this zigzag trace, a little junk there. Um, it's like a PC board with a trace that just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth all the way up the board. 
and then they put current on there and that trace becomes a heater and it heats the whole board. So a little bit of cap tan tape here covering the connections which I was able to re-adhere without any problems. And uh, that's the solder point where the wire was right there. Here's the defective wire so you can get another look at it. And you can see right there, see where that's angling? That's where it was uh, zip tied and where the flexing was starting to break through the wire. So. Yeah, kind of a stupid design idea of the way they did it, but we're going to put that right and this printer's going to last for years. So anyway, soldering's done. I've replaced that uh, black wire, resoldered it to the uh, pin inside the connector there, took it out to do it. These pins are pretty easy. There's little catch blades on these slots and you can push down on that blade and pull the, pull the pin right out. Mm -hmm. So I was able to solder the wire right back on the pin, so that'll be just fine. Okay, so now I have to uh, put the bed back on and then uh, route the wires and uh, hook them back up. The rest of it should be easy. Okay, there we go. It's not pretty. I didn't have any, uh, any really good wire loom to uh, contain the wires, so I took a piece of Romax and split it and put it over the wires and that that works really well I mean, it's not as pretty as it should be I might eventually get some nice dark mesh wire loom for this to cover the wires and protect them but you can see why they did not uh, cosmetically why they chose not to route the wires externally which would have been proper uh, because then you've got you know the footprint increased on the printer and you've got this extra cable out here but as you can see now flexing is at a minimum um, I've got a zip tie on the Romax just on this side of this grommet and just inside of this grommet. And between those two, that completely takes flexing and strain off of the wires where they connect to the board and in here to the board. So it should be able to move quite comfortably without any harm to those wires. Because there's only just a little bit of flexing going on over this course of this, uh, this bend here. And now I don't feel any drag, um, aside from the limit switch. The bed moves a little more freely without twisting those wires internally. So the only thing I've got to do now is print the front half of this uh, panel, put that on there, and it'll be done. Oh yeah, I've got to level the bed. <laughs> Since I took the bed off, I'm going to have to re-level the bed, but uh, I expected that. And it's really something you should be doing once in a while anyway, maybe once a month or so if you're printing a lot is checking, um, checking and re-leveling your bed because those springs age, metal shifts and changes over time, and uh, that's always something you have to be concerned about. But I think that we have got the uh, strain problem and the, the bending problem of the wires taken care of here, and the printer should last quite a while. All right, well, upstairs, and we'll level the bed, and we'll print this side out. And I'll show you a shot of it in operation. All right, the printer is busy making the other part of that side panel. And as you can see, that's working just fine with those wires routed out there. Not a lot of flexing on that wire. That's the right way to do it. So I think this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good modification to make, pretty simple to make. If your wires are not damaged, you could put that on in, oh, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, it's just unhooking the wires and rerouting them. The two screws I needed for the brace on the back uh, were not included. I did not it, these uh, did not use original screws. I used a couple of six thirty seconds screws, kind of like you'd use to mount a hard drive on a computer, and a couple of lock washers and nuts on the inside uh, of the lip to mount those on. The uh, side panel down here is using the existing case screws. These are the same screws that were there. And these two screws will secure this part when it's done printing. But uh, yeah, that's the right way to do it. And uh, this printer's gonna that that part of the printer anyway is gonna last for years. And it's working great. The bed is maintaining a nice steady 60 degrees. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.